This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. On a recent flight to Europe, I brought along Norman Lebrecht's 1997 expose, Who Killed Classical Music? A controversial book that attempts to explain, as the jacket copy states, the poignant fate of classical music, an art that has sold its soul and lost control of its future. The flight attendant noticed the book sitting on my tray table. She smiled and asked, Are they still writing that anymore? It took me a moment to understand what she was asking. Are people still writing classical music? Uh, yes, I answered. But that, uh, had exposed a very large issue. Mercifully, she did not follow up with, And who is writing it? Or, How come I have never heard any of it? The gist of Lebrecht's book is that classical music is in crisis because of corporate, money-grabbing, art-stifling, and ignorant policies. Without discussing his thesis, we might ask a larger question. Is new classical music really dead? It is true that even before the coronavirus pandemic of 2020 to 2021, in city after city and country after country, symphony orchestras were struggling to survive because of shrinking audiences, dwindling private and public support, and unsustainable ticket revenue. On November 15, 2016, the New York Times reported statistics from the League of American Orchestras that indicated, as the headline put it, it's official. Many orchestras are now charities. Since American orchestras depended more on philanthropy than ticket sales to buttress them. But the very same crisis had been one of the central concerns of as diverse a group as Handel when Londoners in the 1730s stopped being interested in his Italian operas, Mozart when the symphony was going out of fashion in 1785 Vienna, and, as noted by Alex Ross in his The Rest is Noise, in the 1930s, when classical music could be sold to the masses in Germany only with pressure from above. German listeners had felt the pull of Americanized popular music in the Weimar era, and they kept demanding it under Nazism. The situation in which classical music currently finds itself might not be a unique function of an aging cohort of arts patrons in the first quarter of the 21st century, one could optimistically point to the fact that there are more orchestras worldwide today than in the 19th century, and that new symphony orchestras are being created in a number of countries, including many in China. We could simply be going through a readjustment phase, one that has merely been accelerated by a global health crisis. As music critic Anne Majet wisely put it in the Washington Post, when an orchestra closes, it's seen as an assault on Beethoven and Brahms. By contrast, when a restaurant closes or a car company goes bankrupt, people may bitterly bemoan it, but they don't see it as a threat to food, nor do they think that cars are endangered. 